our next storyteller, Jose Rosario. So <laughs> you have a couple fans. Come on out here. Come on out here. So Jose. Uh, I, I, there's not enough nice things that I can say about this young guy other than I, I, I love you. He's, he's one of my true friends that I've met along this journey in a very short period of time. And obviously, peace love has rubbed off on him because last year he came out in a suit. Not so much this year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just to recap, you know, we wanted to do a spotlight. I think we hear stories often and then we don't hear, well, what happens next and what happens next? And we, we've been fortunate to experience that with Devin. And I think with Jose, you know, he shared his story for the very first time, talked about his mental health for the very first time on this stage. He's also the coordinator of disability services here at Rhode Island College. And, you know, it was interesting listening to, to Susan Robinson talking about, you know, words are powerful. That's what Jose talked about last year. Words are powerful. Um, and let's hear what you've been up to. Let's learn more about your journey and what life has been like, my man. All right. All right, Jose Rosario. So I want to start off with just one thing, and it's two words. Thank you. Thank you for creating this space today. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to come here and spend time with the Peace Love family. And for those of you who are your first storytellers, welcome to our family. But I also want to thank you because I understand the honor and the privilege that it is to be welcomed back to this stage. This place for me is a very special place. It's the place where I figured out who Jose was. And it happened right in front of the eyes of hundreds of people. And uh, it was terrifying. And we're, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to let you in on just a little bit of what I talked about last year. So I started off by sharing with everyone how I was born several months premature and what that was like for my family to have to see a baby so fragile in an incubator and not be able to hold your child or your grandchild and not being able to really interact with family. And then we talked about the difficulty and the hardship and the pain that my mom says she experienced when she found me blue in the face in my crib after 12 minutes without oxygen. And then, of course, because life is never simple, I talked about words and the doctors that told me, give up because you can't do anything. You will not do what you think you will do. And in fact, told my parents, give up. Those dreams aren't going to happen. Words continue to harm me in ways that I could not imagine. Family, friends, even random strangers making comments and making accusations about who I was. You're ugly, you're not trying hard enough. If you just tried hard enough, maybe you could be normal. What even is normal? But for a 13 year old, for an adolescent, that was detrimental. I spiraled and on this stage, I shared with you all that I needed help and I finally found it while I was in college. And it was a journey that was painful, but also empowering. So I came out on this stage and I shared all of this and I bared my truth, but I want to share with you what that process was like coming on to this stage. Because my journey with Peace Love actually started two years ago when I heard Devin and AJ on the stage for the first time. Now as they were sharing their story, I was ugly crying. And I mean <laughs> full on ugly crying. <laughs> we're talking sobbing, we're talking tissues weren't even enough at this point. I needed like a bucket. <laughs> And I left and I said to my supervisor who was in the audience, Carrie, I won't make you stand up. Um, <laughs> I want to be a part of Peace Love. And here I thought she was going to tell me, oh, they have a wonderful event coming up. You should definitely go. She looks at me and says, you'll be a storyteller next year. And the first thought that came into my head was, Rosario, you got to stop doing this to yourself. <laughs> what did you do? So I decided, you know what? I'm going to trust her. I'll at least say hello. And I got to meet Matt Kaplan. And I'd be lying if I told you that I was walking into that meeting feeling confident or that I even knew what I wanted. And after talking with Matt, I was still unsure about sharing my story. See, I grew up in a family and I grew up in an environment where we don't talk about mental health. We don't talk about what's going on. And for those of us in the mental health profession, it's even worse. We're expected to always pretend that we're okay. 
And I was already in that mindset. I was in school, I was getting my degrees, I wasn't ready to do that. And I was thinking, oh no, what about my career? What about what everyone expects me to be? I was an advocate because it was easier to do that than to actually take stock of who I was. So after meeting with Matt, I still said, okay, you're stuck with this, you have to do it. And a couple weeks, actually a couple days before Storytellers, I was working on my PowerPoint. I had to shut my office door because I just started crying. Because it was the first time that I had brought my story into some form of a physical world. That what was in my head was coming out into something that I knew was going to be shared with a bunch of people. I didn't know it was going to be that many people. But it was shared. And it was, it was insane to think that my story, my words, the photos on that screen were going to be a piece of the lives of the people sitting in front of me. So fast forward, I'm backstage watching Big Naza do flips on stage and there are creatures dancing around and we're laughing it up and I'm just thinking, is there an emergency exit out here and how fast can I get to it? Uh, but of course, I did not. I, I came out here and I shared my truth and on this stage, I transformed. I was able to figure out not only who I was and what my story was and what that meant to me, but who I am now because of it. I was able to be proud of the journey that I have gone through and also remember that I am still going, that no one can tell you where your limits are, you decide that. And my advice to you would be to remember, you are limitless. You don't have limits. We can accomplish the impossible together. In this room, we're seeing an environment where feelings and connectedness is happening. Community is being built and it is empowering to see. So I shared my story and I can't tell you that I remember a single word because I don't. And I walked off the stage and I was like, oh man, I don't know how good that was. I don't think it was that good. And people hugged me as I started to cry back there because I wasn't ready for the relief I was going to feel. I wasn't ready to realize that the one thing that was holding me back was keeping my story inside and being silenced. And I was doing it to myself. What a disservice it is to silence ourselves when we have so much to give the world. So after Peace Love, I was riding that mighty wave and I felt great. I was like, you know what? We're gonna change the world, let's do it. But then things started to die down. And a lot of you don't know this, but I became very frustrated and very lost. I didn't know what to do anymore because I had already uncapped that jar. It was too late. I had felt what it was like to be authentic, to be raw and to be vulnerable, and I knew there was no going back, I refuse. So I, try, I just kind of spent time over the summer thinking about what's next for me. And I reached out and connected with some amazing people who were great support systems. A lot of you are here today and I'm so grateful for you. And we thought about what's next. And that traveled with me all through the summer. And then September came around and I was working at a job where I am very happy. I get to help many, many students remember that you are more than just an identity, that you are several identities, that you are a person with dreams and hopes, and let's realize those dreams. But I realized our system fails you all the time, and that there was more to what I needed to do, that I couldn't just say, you need to do it. I needed to walk the walk or roll the roll if I was going to talk the talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I thought, what's next? And I remember saying to Matt Kaplan, I need to do something. And he said, well, why don't you become a creator? Just like that, it was, it was a very simple conversation. And I said to him, and he still quotes me on it, Matt, I am not an artist. And to some extent, I still kind of hold that true. He'll tell you differently, but in some ways I still feel like I haven't perfected my craft and I'm still figuring out what layers there are. But anyway, I took the risk. I went into creators training thinking, this is going to be different, but maybe this is the way that I can make the change. And I met some incredible human beings. You all are amazing. And I joined the Peace Love family. Yeah. And I joined the Peace Love family, and I knew right then and there that that was where I was meant to be. I was at a workshop recently with a bunch of other creators, and I looked over, 
at our friend Katie and said, I've never been part of a community where I knew if I needed you, I can reach out and you are there. Without any, any, any hesitation, we are there for one another. So I became a creator and I joined a team of fearless advocates and I was, again, on cloud nine. And Rhode Island College welcomed this change. We started running workshops with students that had barely said two words to me that started to tell me what, they, what it felt like to live in a world where maybe you don't recognize social codes or maybe where you're so angry and you don't know how to share it, let's do it on paper. And it was incredible for me to see the potential of each and every one of these participants, each of these people telling me a piece of their story that they hadn't told before. And I knew that this was what I needed to do. In October, I was asked to speak again, to tell my story, and apparently peace love didn't scare me away because I said yes. I didn't know at the time that I'd be the keynote at a peer mental health advocate conference. And when I walked in and saw college students from across the country, I thought, okay, so this is going to be different. We're, we're going to be really raw and authentic. And we talked about the system, and we talked about how difficult it is to be an advocate when you're not caring for yourself. But more importantly, I told them how afraid I was to be my own advocate and share my own story. And as I'm telling them my story, without any hesitation at this point, I really just needed to get it out. I noticed on the front row there was someone crying. And I said, okay. The clinician in me kicked in and I said, at the end, we'll touch base. So I went over to debrief, as, as you do, right? And he's still crying. And I'm like, okay, been crying the entire talk. I, I wonder what's going on. So I said three words, how are you? The student said to me, and I get chills just thinking about it, you're the first person to ask me that in 10 years. In 10 years, you haven't been asked how are you and somebody has actually meant it. And I knew then and there that there was so much more to my life than I even realized, and I decided to go on a journey, a crazy journey that I'm gonna share with you today, and actually you're the first people to know. I had started a blog last year called The Phoenix Empowered under the pretense that as a phoenix, you rise from the ashes and you are broken down to your bare essentials because you are silenced all the time. Mental health, people of color, all different identity groups, we are silenced and it is wrong. And we can't expect you to rise until we empower you to rise. How are you going to rise when everyone's telling you you can't or you won't or you cannot do what you want to do? There's no way. We have to create that space. So this year, after that talk and after more Peace Love workshops and meeting these incredible people, I've decided that I'm going to make a real change. And in the coming months, stay tuned to social media, hint, hint, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I am launching my very own nonprofit called The Phoenix and Power. Thank you. Thank you. And my goal is to provide the voice that peace, love, and all of you gave me last year and gave me today. It's incredible to be a part of this, to see the growth and the emotion and the love in this room. Thank you all so much for just being here and being present. And I can tell you that I'll promise you a couple of things today. I promise to love authentically, to always be raw and vulnerable when needed, and three, to always make sure that when someone is silenced, I encourage you to not only speak, but speak louder because they need to hear what you have to say. And so I'll leave, you, I'll leave you with just a couple of words. I was terrified to come up here today because I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about. And to be honest with you, it wasn't until I was at our event last night where I remembered that this stage feels like home. In telling my story, my relationships changed. My mom looked at me when the Peace Love video came out and said, I know you now. I know who you are now. But what she didn't realize was, I was also figuring out who I was when I shared that. So. You don't have to know who you are, but find that voice, especially the one that's been stomped on and pushed around. Find it, 
because we need you out there. We need all of you out there to make this change. Thank you.